This video is about linearly dependent and linearly independent vectors. Consider these three vectors, a, b, and c. A linear combination of these vectors is any sum of scalar multiples of the vectors, such as 3 times a minus 4 times b, which works out to the vector with entries minus 1, 2, 5, 8. Another linear combination would be a plus 1 half b minus 2c, which works out to the vector with entries minus 1 half, 5 halves, 7 halves, 9 halves. And in general, a linear combination of vectors v1 through vn is any sum of scalar multiples of the vectors. We can put in any real numbers for c1 through cn, including zeros and including negative numbers, which is why we could think of this subtraction as really a sum where one of the coefficients is negative 4. So let's try to figure out if this vector d is a linear combination of a, b, and c. In other words, can we write d as some, like x1, some number x1 times a plus x2 times b plus x3 times c? We could write this out as follows, or we could even write it out as a system of linear equations. Recall that solving a system of linear equations like this can be done by row reducing the augmented matrix, where we augment by the constant terms that here were on the left side of our equations. I'll omit the details of row reducing and just write down the final form, which tells us that we can indeed solve this system of linear equations with x1 equals negative 1, x2 equals 11, and x3 equals 0. As a check, if we write down negative 1 times the vector a plus 11 times the vector b plus 0 times the vector c, we do indeed get the vector 10, 9, 8, 7. So D is indeed a linear combination of A, B, and C. In fact, we didn't even need C. The coefficient of C ended up being 0. The set of vectors V1 through Vn are called linearly dependent if at least one of the vectors can be written as a linear combination of the others. So in the previous example, a, b, c, and d were linearly dependent because vector d could be written as a linear combination of the others. Equivalently, we can say that v1 through vn are linearly dependent if there are scalars x1 through xn, not all of them zero, such that x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2 plus all the way through xn times vn is equal to the zero vector. Specifying that the xi are not all zero is important because we could always make the sum equal to zero just by making the x's all equal to zero. Let's see why these two definitions are equivalent. Suppose we have the statement of definition one, that one of the vectors can be written in as a linear combination of the others. Let's say, say for example, v3 can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors then we can get an expression like the one in definition two just by subtracting over v3 to the other side. So we have exactly the expression from definition two with the c's functioning as the x's. And notice that the, these x's are not all zero because the coefficient of v3 is negative one, which is not zero. And conversely, suppose we have the condition in definition two so we have an expression like this where all the x's aren't zero, but the sum is zero. Then we can just find an x that's not zero. Let's say, um, say x4 is not zero, and use that to solve for v4 in terms of the other v's. So we can write x4 times v4 in terms of all the other v's, and then just divide both sides by x4, which is a number that's not zero, to isolate v4 
and get v4 as a linear combination of the other vectors, which is exactly the condition we need for definition 1. So enough about linearly dependent vectors, let's talk about linearly independent vectors. Well, there are vectors that are not linearly dependent. In other words, in terms of definition 1, the vectors v1 through vn are called linearly independent if it is not possible to write any one of the vectors as a linear combination of the others. Or, thinking in terms of definition 2, the vectors v1 through vn are linearly independent if it's not possible to write an expression like this one, where multiples of the vectors add up to 0, except for if those coefficients x1 through xn are all zeros. So the vectors are linearly independent if the only possible scalars x1 through xn that make this expression 0 are x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, and all the x's are 0. So let's see if these three vectors are linearly dependent or linearly independent. One way to do that is to write down the equation x1 times u plus x2 times v plus x3 times w equals the 0 vector and see if we can find solutions for x1, x2, and x3 that are not just all zeros. I can rewrite this equation as follows, or I can write it as this system of linear equations. Solving the system of linear equations can be done by writing down the augmented matrix and converting it to reduced row echelon form. Once again, I'll omit the details of row reducing it and just write down the final answer. From this matrix, we can see that the only solution is that x1 is 0, x2 is 0, and x3 is 0. So there are no other solutions besides the x's all being zeros. So that means that these three vectors are, in fact, linearly independent. In this video, we defined linearly dependent and linearly independent vectors. Linearly dependent vectors are redundant in some way. You can find a vector in the group that can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors. Whereas you can think of linearly independent vectors as all being necessary for the collection. You can't write any one of them as a linear combination of the others.